going to sell presets. And, but that's not a viable thing for six years down the road, right? Like mm -hmm. there's, yeah, I could get into it, but uh, oh, okay. we'll start. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll yeah. start and then we'll jump are we, in. Are we, are we good? I think we're rolling. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. That's a little uh, snippet right That's there. a little snippet, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna start the pod. Um, right. What I wanna do with these is really like highlight the complexity of um, what a content creator is. Um, and, and why I say that is because every time you ask a content creator yeah. what they do, the answer's never <laughs> like a straight, like you're, you're never gonna yeah. say, oh, I'm a photographer. Or like, you know, cause you probably have like 30 other things on the side that yeah. like you might also be, like you might be a colorist, like you might, you know. Um, so my thought is we can kick things off. We can tell the people who you are, what you do. But a way I want to frame it is like, if you're in an Uber okay. and the Uber driver asks you. I like that. What do you do? Yeah, I like that. What's like the, the response? Honestly, my go-to response these days, even when I'm at a party or whatever, uh, including Uber driver, I'll say I'm a photographer. Okay. And I'll let them guess. And the first thing they'll go to is, uh, oh, you do weddings, right? And then I'm like, oh, no. Uh, then, then I let them know what I do. I'm like, no, I actually, um, I mainly do brand work and commercial work, uh, specializing in uh, outdoor, adventure, lifestyle, fashion, apparel. Uh, but that's the bulk of my work. But I always let them guess that I'm a wedding photographer first. Really? You yeah. just let them like come on and yeah. that's so far. So do you tell so, them like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I actually practice this um, like introduction because I never know how to introduce myself. See, this is this is the problem. Like, So <laughs> I, spent, I spent a whole year thinking about I'm like, when I quit my job about almost a year and a half ago, I was like, okay, before when I was in digital marketing, you know, it's so easy. That's my title. I was like, hey, what do you do? I'm in digital marketing. I'm in sales, whatever. But now I'm a photographer. But like, everyone's kind of a photographer these days. So I spent a whole year figuring out that response. So That's I was like, funny. I actually sat down one day at a coffee shop, like, how do I introduce myself? Like, what is my title that people actually get? No, so I just end up like, I just gave up. I just let people guess. That's so funny. <laughs> That's actually too funny. Because yeah. cause I feel like um, it's like, it's, so I have so many questions now. Uh, but so did you ever do weddings? Like, was that ever a thing? Like, do you no, have wedding work to? I, I've never done wedding and I knew I never wanted to do weddings. However, I did shoot one wedding because my friend needed a photographer really badly because one of them started bailed on her. Okay. And I've confirmed the fact that I will not do weddings. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, you're like, not a thing. I don't think I'm the right person, but I don't do weddings yet. But if a friend needs me, yeah. I will 100% be there. To, to that, shoot it, to right? Help. Yeah. I feel like that's the move is like once you can, uh, I'm just putting a timer on, once you can um, like support people in like a friendly way, then yeah. you can actually like, do the wedding but if it's just like a random one like you need your process you need to figure out like how to onboard clients you need an intake for, like there's exactly. so many things that go into the wedding bit where like if you're not experienced you're just like overwhelmed so quickly like yeah which is wild so that's interesting so you were in so i feel like when we first met then because we met on a random hike by chance through a mutual friend which was uh Chelsea wasn't, wasn't all that random. I feel like we're back wasn't random. someday. <laughs> At some point, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. But it, it's funny though because uh, like I didn't know who was coming. Like I just knew Anthony um, Gugliota. Yeah, Anthony was coming. Who's killing it right now? I don't know. He's on fire. He's on right fire. Now. His videos are good. He's yeah. really good. Uh, invites us over for a hike and yeah. Two's Falls or what was it? It was the Q Falls. The Q Falls. I think I might be saying that wrong, but. I think it's the okay. Well, the photos are unreal from that day still. So. Oh, you yeah. guys brought all your Arcteric stuff with the... Oh, yeah, with Dan, yeah. yeah. With the little shoot there, yeah. That was wild. And we, like, <laughs> we left, and you guys stayed, like, another three, four hours just, like, staying yeah. photos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We stayed till things were melting. Oh, wow. Yeah, before we left, yeah. Wild, wild. So, on that day, were you still in digital marketing then, or...? That was February last year. So, I just quit. Just quit. So, I just went full-time. I, I, I went full-time with photography uh, January of 2022. Wow. Right in the beginning of the year. Wow. Yeah. So what, what allowed you to make the jump? Like, what was the... So, do you want, like, the long story or, like, the short story? I mean, let's... Or, like, let's the medium do, story. <laughs> medium? I mean, I'm kind of a fan of the long stories. I think if you... 
I think uh, what I could maybe ask one quick question, yeah. Um, yeah. which is like, what? When did you realize you were creative? And how did that filter into your path in digital marketing? Like, let's start there. Like, were you someone in high school that had a camera and then did the traditional path and still kind of kept with it throughout university and then got a job and were like always thinking about it or? Yes, maybe I'll just give the, the quick rundown. So I actually went to school for uh, life science. So I specialized in like biology, biomedical sciences, stuff like that. So like completely nothing related to digital marketing or photography. Uh, but I graduated because um, I had a couple of mentors when I was in school where they told me like, hey, one of the main, main skills you want to learn no matter what profession you're in is sales and marketing. So that's the first thing when I started doing sales. And then I, and I dabbled with digital marketing as well. And I kind of enjoyed both. So I was always kind of in both for a while. And I really liked it. And I really liked the, the part where you would identify a solution for a client and solve their problem. And... And them, them getting a return on investment, stuff like that. And I just enjoy, really enjoy the problem solving part, like identifying um, a client's problem and then finding a solution for it. So when I, but, but at the time I was working downtown and just always been a city boy and just got kind of, you know, a little bit tired of the city. Want to go outside, start hiking a little more. So I got into traveling, hiking, got into nature and outdoors and just fell in love with it. And I just love being out there. It's kind of like a weekend escape for me. So when I'm there, I'm, I started to see, look for inspiration of where to go on Instagram. So fair, I started seeing fair. people uh, like, you know, like Daniel, they post all the landscape stuff around town. I'm like, oh, I want to go there, I want to hike there and stuff like that. And like, oh, maybe I should like make a little Instagram account, share my adventures and stuff like that. And that's where the camera came in. And uh, it was always adventure first, photography second for me. But that over a year or two kind of flipped because I started to understand the art of photography and I kind of fell in love with the art of photography. But it wasn't until maybe two years into photography or that I was like, hey, you know what? Like I'm good at finding where the clients are. I'm good at talking to clients. I speak their language. I know, I know how to identify the problem. I know how to ask the right questions and stuff like that because I do that for a living anyways. I'm like, can I have... Create like can I solve their problems through a uh, creative avenue, like, like through that. creativity, uh, through a creative aspect, through a photography aspect. So that's when that shift happened. But I never really considered myself like a creative or whatever, because it was just a hobby. I was just another dude with a camera and trying to shoot some cool waterfall, sh impress my friends. They're like, oh, I'm in these cool places. I'm living the life. Uh, but it was just really about just sharing these cool places I go to and uh, making a cool art of it. Because I see so many, like, people, I didn't know a photo could go so far. I thought it was just a point and shoot. But through Instagram, I see that people can really take a photo and elevate it to another level. And, like, that inspired me. But I didn't know that door. Like, I didn't know I opened that door when I first picked up the camera. Mm. So. Wild, yeah. wild. Yeah, it's actually, it was always like a fun thing when I was first starting out too, where you're like, come here, come here, look at this photo I took. And you show them the final one and they're just like, this is what it looked like before. And they're just like, what? Like, Whoa, how did, yeah, yeah, and yeah, the raw yeah. shows up, it's all like gray and like yeah, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, so I definitely, it, it definitely struck me too, where like you see these shots just coming out of like Bali with lush greens or like the Arctic yeah. with these am like amazing, amazing blues. blues. Yeah, like, yeah. and you don't realize the, uh, the amount of like creative interpretation that the photographer actually has in that scenario, right? Like right. To, to, to bring out certain elements where you look at a guy like Benjamin Hartman, who's got oh, like huge. the purest big whites. Yeah, yeah, big inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, your, your like winter photography or like colder photography is definitely like, it's, it's in the same sort of um, style in a way, like very polished, very clean, like minimal yeah. like tones went with your winter stuff. And um, but yeah, he he's a good example of like how your blues can look so totally different than uh, like um, the Icelandic guy, who yeah. like really accentuates. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Like he's a funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's a hilarious guy. But it's just like the the tones are wild all over the place. They're from the same country. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, um, so it's cool that you say that too. It's the the I think the interesting thing that you mentioned as well is is like the solving client problems piece. Yeah. And and I almost realized that too is like the longer that I was getting into this, the more um, it was almost like a consultant, not like 
you were you you could never just go to a brand and be like, hey, can I take photos for you? It was like all it became a conversation around like, what does the creative solve by you using it? And exactly. that's how you then sell the photo video piece. Exactly. When did you realize that? Like that's because I feel like everybody gets it at different points in their journey, and that's the difference between like a local videographer who shoots videos for like whoever and like someone who is really involved in like a production process. Yeah, I think I think I had to I had to learn it the, when I first started like doing um, sales before I got into marketing. I had to uh, it, like that 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 process was very natural for me um, because you have to like being in sales. You have to you have to first you have to first understand like ask questions under, understand what like what the client wanted. And they're looking for, uh, they're looking to make money off of whatever dig- marketing efforts they're doing. And I know the brands, they, they have to, they need these creative ads, they need these photos, they need these assets to make money. So like that's already apparent that they need a service like this, but it's just finding out how they, how they want to go about it, what's their strategy, what their uh, brand identity is, what kind of direction they're trying to go. Like, let's say if you're trying to, if you're trying to, you know, push a campaign on one of the Jeeps, like Ford or Bronco or whatever, um, that's going to look very different from their maybe F-150 or something like that, or one of their um, sedans or regular sedans and stuff like that. So it's just understanding what they're trying to push, what demographic they're trying to push it to. And and yeah, basically just understanding yeah, what they cool. want. And, then, uh, and I think I picked that up through just being in marketing, just like you have to ask these questions first, like, so I kind of have the the other end of the spectrum. Like I kind of understood the other, like the question on the business end, like uh, the, what the client would be asking when they're when they're sitting in a boardroom, whatever, did this kind of strategy. Like these are the questions I think they'll be asking because that's what we asked when I was in their end. So coming to the, being on the creative side, it was just um, it was just like very simple for me to like it was it came really naturally for me to ask these questions. But I feel like some of my buddies who were starting in creatives first, going to it, it might be a little harder for them to unveil, to like realize what what's the right question now. Like what what are they thinking about? Because they've never been exposed to that uh, like that space, so they have to maybe go through a little bit of trial and error with the client. But like maybe ask a bunch of questions. Uh, they're not all relevant, but he, eventually they hone they hone in on like what's the best question to ask. I definitely ask a lot of useless questions. They're kind of like, wait, that didn't do anything. That totally wasted five minutes of uh, our time. But, uh, but I think it's all trial and error. Um, yeah, finding your flow, right? With yeah, like- finding the flow and just. Um, but I was a little fortunate because I came in from the business end to, to and then picked up photography later on. So. Oh, so you didn't, so you never did photography when growing up. Like it was, no. oh, that's so interesting. So, oh, so really it was like, I'm doing hikes and now I'm taking photos while hiking. Yes. Wow. So this was like a pandemic thing. No, no, no. It was back in 2017 when I started really wow. do, liking, uh, I started really hi- hiking. Okay. And then in 2018, I got really good at hiking. Okay. So I could actually go to some like cool, actual cool places without gassing myself out, stuff like that. But, uh. And then 2019 is when I picked up the DSLR for the first time. Wow. It was a hand-me-down for my friend. I never, I was always reluctant to pick it up just because all the buttons, you know, the old DSLR, the 5Bs oh, yeah. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a spaceship, like cockpit. Yeah. It looks like an airplane, like a pilot, right? Like it's it's so complicated, it's so intimidating. So I never want to pick it up. And I knew you have to like adjust all these dials. There's three different dials and stuff like that. ISO, it's just like it, too complicated for me. So I was always intimidated by it. I never picked it up. I feel that so. my my first camera was uh was my dad's D seventy one hundred a Nikon. I don't know if you even know. I don't know oh, dude, this thing. Is. It was ancient, man. It was ancient, and it was like it was literally like the first digital um, DSLR that came out. Like it was the first wow. camera that could shoot RAW and JPEG. Okay. And I remember my dad. He gets it, and he like he's like RAW why would I ever want to shoot raw? Like, I just want JPEG straight out of camera because he was a film yeah. guy, right? Yeah, like, yeah. he was like, the, the camera photo is the camera photo. Like, I don't want to develop this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Not realizing, like, where the industry was going, right? Like, yeah. now, if you shoot JPEG, it's a backup, maybe. Like, you would yeah. never shoot JPEG. Like, even, like, five years ago, like, 
it was always a debate, like what's better to shoot, JPEG or RAW? Like all those YouTube videos came out, like it was like a huge, now like nobody talks about JPEG or RAW. Like yeah. it's like, you're shooting RAW, end of story, and like you're gonna deal with the storage space, you know? Yeah. Like, um, so I get that, because I get this thing, and I'm just like, what, how much do I have to learn about this? Like you shoot it on auto, the photo's not coming out, and then you, you fall into like the rabbit hole that is the exposure triangle. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like all the things that come around it. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's so interesting to me, because the, um, I think uh, the one thing that was described to me once is like there's two types of creators. There's business first creators and there's creative creators. First. Yeah, creative, okay. creative first, you know? Right. Um, and, and I never saw that until this person told me about it. And uh, it's, you literally just touched on that as like you noticing this too is like you come at it in the business end and like maybe you had someone who like was doing photography for 10 years before you you were. And they're just so much better at the creative um, like ideation. They have a workflow, yeah. like they get the technicalities of it. But then you put them in a in a room to sell something and they they're just like like buy my photos. Like you know what I mean? Like they don't <laughs> understand the the yeah. the dynamic of it. And yeah. uh, this is one of the reasons that I definitely wanted to talk to you is because like I feel like you've made a really good sort of um, set up for yourself. You have your studio business, like you've done these spec shoots, you have your website, like you're yeah. partnered with somebody and you also have a really good group of like, if, if people followed you and like paid attention to you, like you can put, pick out like repeatable personalities that kind of show up on your social feeds and obviously like hang out with you. Like there's your core group of guys. Like, um, so I guess before we dump in, uh, jump into the, um, the sort of, uh, group benefits and sort of like being able to partner with people that complement your strengths and maybe like right. you're the business and the creator and like I guess we we know the storyline to how you got into photography like where are you at right now with it and and uh how like what exactly is your business um so do you, do you want to start with where I am right now yeah and let's then, do like, it how I got into it later okay. yeah, yeah uh so currently I just main my main focus is um around commercial and brand work so I do a lot of, um, you know, like my introduction earlier, what's my, what, what I do for a living. Yeah, yeah. Exactly what I do right now is um, I, it focuses around a lot of uh, outdoor adventure, lifestyle, photography. We just recently been getting into um, videos, so short form videos uh, for the clients. Uh, I know I don't post a lot on my IG show from videos. Yeah, uh, yeah. Brock, you're killing me. <laughs> uh, but um, the clients want it. It's hard to shy away from that. And so we've been really trying to pick that up, uh, like on the on, on the business end as well. But um, yeah, we just serve. Uh, we 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 mainly work with. Uh, well, we're trying to get into the more higher caliber brands, the brands with larger distribution, like nationwide distribution or even global distribution. Uh, I spend a good amount of time working with um, more of smaller, medium brands. Um, I I don't have a lot of experience working with like mom and pop shop type of like very small ones, but I mainly work with um, like, you know, medium sized brands, like they generally have a bit, bit of a budget to to do commercial shoots to launch campaigns or they launch a set of new products and they need a whole spe uh, set of photos um, to support their, their launch, right? So that those are the type of companies I work with. And um, when you say we, like, are you freelancing or do you actually have like- So I currently work at, a, I currently work with uh, another buddy of mine, Roy, Wanders. You, Roy Dahl Wanders, yeah, that's his yeah, head, yeah. yeah. And we're working on a studio, it's called 10 Mile Studios. Cool. So we basically, it's kind of like an extension of the freelance work I used to do. Uh, used to being like a few months ago, <laughs> not yeah, that yeah. long ago. I still do some freelance work because I still have clients that I've built up over the years, so I still serve them. Um, so when they have campaign, you know, monthly or quarterly or my returning clients, so I still do that but Roy and I were like pushing hard to land new clients to try to push it to the next level to push the next caliber of clients uh, like recently we just came back from a project in Bali uh, I wanted to ask you about this, this is, yeah uh, it looks amazing. we were working with it was probably one of our um, funnest brand we did and maybe one of our biggest uh, that has like the biggest distribution. So it's the company called Echo okay. e CCO. yeah you may have seen their story somewhere around like maybe I don't know I don't know where their stores are. So I'm terrible. I literally, I think I literally I think saw Eden one Center last night. Yeah, Eden Center definitely has one. I literally think I passed one last night. Um, 
And I was like, how do I know that brand? Because <laughs> like, yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah, it yeah. like, <laughs> which is they, funny. They used to do like mom and pop, like shoes, you know, a yeah, yeah. little more old school, kind of like Skechers. But I think they're recently, they're trying to be a little more cool now, like more like adventurous out there. I think everybody's kind of doing that. Like the active wear is like really a thing now. So we shot their hiking shoes, the hiking boots out there. Uh, we we ran a volcano and stuff like that. So that was really fun. And the distribution is going to be a lot bigger than what we used to. Um, so that was a really fun project. Um, so that this is the time of, type of work we try to do. So they're trying to launch a few new products. So we just get them some dope photos for them to, uh, you know, post it on their banners, uh, their website, catalog, uh, digital ads. Yeah. Epic. Epic. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the, the marketing, I mean, so this is the interesting thing too, is, is like packaging up the product is like most of the times when you have a creator that didn't, that doesn't understand like where the creative actually ends up getting used. Like, if that makes sense, like, do you find that because you had that marketing aspect, you're able to be like, uh, a lot more fluid in the conversations with like where the photos actually go, how the short form videos can actually like provide results. Right. And, and is that really like your value add in this sort of partnership or like where does Roy come in to like support the studio in a way? So, so Roy, first of all, Roy is an incredible shooter. Okay. Uh, Roy can really shoot. So we start off, we, we met each other on Instagram. So it's, um, and we met because he, I really respected his work. And I thought my work was like very mediocre back then, but he thinks it's good enough. So we met up. So thank you. Ross. You're too humble. <laughs> I honestly thought my work was like need a lot of work back then, but um, but I think we both grew a lot too. So uh, we started working together. So I have already been freelancing for maybe a year before I wanted to do uh, wanted to do anything with Roy. But I just got to a point where because the type of work I do, it really depends on the season as well. There's certain seasons where it's crazy busy. For me, the craziest season is fall. Cause that's when, cause I work with a lot of brand, like outdoors, right? It's always a transition or apparel, fashion, stuff like that. It's always a transition around just, just before fall. And every brand changes content like drastically. And maybe even from winter to spring. And um, so during, it, was, it wasn't in, until during last year's spring and last year's fall where I realized I was too stretched too thin. I was getting a little burned out and I needed to, because um, I was just doing it all by myself. And so I needed to think of a way to kind of create a little bit of a system and, and hopefully have, start having outsourcing some of, some of my work, having people filling, like maybe someone edit, maybe someone to schedule, stuff like that. Um, so I could focus more on the business development side of things because I really enjoy the business. I really enjoy like, you know, pitching, creating a pitch deck, uh, reaching out to brand, talking with them, getting on discovery calls, stuff like that. Um, I kind of enjoy that sometimes a little more than shooting or editing because sometimes it gets repetitive. It's that becomes business a little creator. cookie cutter, right? If you work with a brand for like, you know, many times now, you kind of know what they want. You have something they expect a certain level of quality uh, they don't want you to be too creative but they don't want you to be not creative so they so you're not once you get used to it you're not really pushing the envelope anymore but they become good they become your backbone of your business it becomes easier and easier so um it was these retainer clients starting to they 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 were taking a good amount of time and then also like new clients come in and it just become hard to manage so i was, so i thought like in order to grow this I will have to work with somebody. And Roy has a like really strong skill set in terms of like, um, like organizing, planning. Um, he's very, he's also a very different personality than I am, which I think complements me. Like I'm very bad with detail. And I like to see, I like to look at the bigger picture. And even when editing, I, I get lazy sometimes. Okay. Uh, whereas he is complete opposite. He's very detail oriented and stuff like that. Um, and, and I think that just complements me really well. And I wanted to eventually focus more on the biz dev side of things instead of the, the production side of things. And he happened to like the production side of things more than the biz dev side of things. I'm like, oh, perfect. Let's see if we can do something together. Because um, I, I never really wanted to, to be a freelancer my whole life. So like, 
Oh, sorry, I'm getting off frame. <laughs> I forgot about we'll that. We'll keyframe out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. Switch it a wide. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I just thought like being a freelancer, because I, 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 left the, I, left, I left the job because I didn't want it to kind of tr just trade my time for money mm. the, the whole time. So, mm. uh, and I, think, I feel like freelancer is kind of the same thing. Yeah, because uh, you're basically just trading your own time for money, and I just want to develop a system where I can leverage more resources, like more more time, have a system, you know, have other people fill in certain parts of it, and kind of just run a bit, run not like a huge business, but you know, at least have a small operation going. It's that business so, creator, man. I'm telling you, you yeah. got that. Yeah, <laughs> most people are like, I just want to shoot it, like I just want to edit, like I just want to be in the creative, and I think it's like that that. Uh, when, when you realize the, um, the pieces that need to all come along with it, you see the potential, right? And that, if that's something that excites you and you can still have a hand in the shooting, the editing, you know, like there, it, it's amazing to me how the successful sort of creative package requires people to all think in different ways and still be interested in the creative like equally, you know? Yeah, so it's yeah. like, it's interesting to hear you say that for sure. Yeah, I uh, want to ask something too, because... Um... Oh, what is how how do I word it? Because uh, most people they 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 they, they get in creative they, yet they want to be in the creative side of things. I think that's great. I think that's how you actually get better, like more and more creative. Uh, like you won't plateau. I think you always push an envelope. But it's also like that. To me, that takes a lot of effort because I feel like I'm sure like like you have killer photos, bro. So you probably know. Like when you get to a certain degree of like, I guess level, like, I don't even know how to put it. It's, it's hard to like, like how good you are. Like when you get to a certain part, if you want to improve just that like 1%, it takes like so much more effort than the beginning. So I feel like pushing that ne next level of creativity is so, I find it a little more challenging for me than maybe uh, somebody else who is like a lot more focused on that. So that's why I want to get into the more biz dev side of things. Um, I don't know. I just love like talking to like other businesses and just like bring up, like, hey, what's wrong with your business? Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, oh, let me see if I can help you solve it. You know? Yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> that's fair. It's actually funny too that you say that because I found this happening to me in the fall where um, it's like, like I know when I first started. So like when I, when I first started doing this, like yeah. I was living in Germany and I was about to go into a master's program for, for business, like hilarious, right? Cause like totally not, <laughs> like this wasn't even on my mind, but I was starting an Instagram cause I was living in Germany. I was traveling every weekend. I was taking photos and I was like, I'm someone that like, doesn't really have like a balanced middle ground. Like if I want to do something, I want to like know how the best do it and see like how close I can kind of get so like I immediately went into like instead of just taking JPEG photos traveling around Germany and like enjoying Germany I was like this weekend I'm getting these photos I'm going to practice editing all week long I'm gonna, you know what, what and then what am I going to approve on like the following weekend and uh whenever someone asks me they're like how did you learn how to color grade like how did you learn whatever like there was this guy on YouTube called Martin Schrader I don't know if you've ever seen him he was this Kind of you really must have seen him. He literally, all he did was Lightroom tutorials. Okay. Uh, yeah, and he would, they'd literally I be like. I might have seen one of those then. <laughs> had to, had to. Because he would basically do like, how to edit like Sam Colder, how to edit like whoever. Oh, like, like dark, moody, yeah, color, Everything, yeah. everything though, everything. And, and they would be like 30 minute long tutorials. And nobody in their right mind watches 30 minute long tutorials. But, but what I found is, that if you found a 10 minute Lightroom tutorial, it was like a quick hack, how to remove garbage on the ground, like how to like get an orange and teal look because that was popular back then. Yeah, like, yeah, do you know I, what I mean? I like definitely just the, try to replicate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody did, right? It's like my sliders, how do I move my calibration tool, right? Like, but this guy would go in depth, how the tone curve interacts with the HSL tool, like all these different mm -hmm. things. And it's like the, the amount of speed that I had in improvement during that first three months living in Germany and the ability to like every weekend go to a different city and see how the light changes based on the, mm. the country I was in and how that changed the photos and I needed to flatten my whites or crush my blacks, like all different things. And, and then like now it's like, 
I know how Lightroom works to such a degree. It's a muscle memory. It's a muscle memory, yeah. And it's like, like, and now, now I say like back then I would just take a photo because I thought it looked cool. Now I, I say to people like I take the photo with the edit in mind. Yeah. And, and you know what I mean? And it's like, and I'm constantly looking. I'm like, I have like just collections of on Instagram of like. Um, Range Rover inspiration, like, and I'll find creators oh. who like have Range Rover. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll have like Iceland photos. I'll have greens. I'll, like, you know what I mean? And, and I'm just like deciphering, like, okay, how come mine doesn't look like this? Like, what do I need to learn, right? But it's that one percent, and it's such a slow process yeah. to, you know. So it's like it's like trying to identify what your what the gap is between you and someone you're uh, inspiring to be. Yeah, I, I feel like in identifying that gap takes the longest. Yeah. Yeah, and well, because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, and you're just looking at their stuff, and you're like, "How am I, how is it not like that? Like, I know I'm close. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but it's not there when I when I move the sliders, it doesn't look like that. Yeah, it's, it's just true. Identifying the gap takes forever. Yeah. It's so true, and you don't know like you, you don't know what to type in on YouTube. Like, yeah, I, I don't feel like I don't. I feel like you should be making a YouTube video now. About, I feel like a lot of people. That's the next from that. one, right? <laughs> um, yeah. uh, so I, I guess when you're when you're talking about this. Uh, kind of like the move from freelancer to career like i think the biggest thing a lot of creators struggle with is kind of figuring out why they're they're doing it if that makes sense like they know they like photography they know they might like videography they know they might want to be interested in like even art or like graphic design but they don't really have that like end goal right so and 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 because they just want to do what they want to do or right? they want to create right yeah and i guess my curiosity with you is like what do you have that end goal in mind are you still figuring it out and would you have any tips maybe for someone that's like thinking should they start a studio should they keep freelancing right i think um i think the reason i got into photography and i wanted to make it as a job like right now i wanted to grow it as like like a business um, like grow as like kind of like a production company and make a scale into something bigger, but it, it, it that's more recent. Like I think the, the the reason I got into photography and wanted to make it like as a job is is a lot more innocent than than what it is now, and and I feel like a lot of people can relate. I for me, I wanted to just escape, like like remember at the beginning, like going outdoors, like traveling is it's kind of an escape for me, I like escape the nine to five. Um, and, and I realized that I don't have a lot of money to travel all the time, but I want to travel all the time, and, but that costs a lot of money. So photography kind of became like a, like a tool for me to pursue that lifestyle. It was the lifestyles after I wanted to see the world more. I wanted to experience more culture just cause I never grew up really going anywhere. And I was always very curious. You know what my, when I was a kid, my favorite channel was like discovery channel. Okay. Ever since I was a kid, and like I'm such a nerd, yeah, like yeah. I wanted to like see dolphins. I went to biology because I wanted I wanted to like study um, like biology. Hopefully, hopefully to work with animals and stuff like abroad and stuff like that. Go to Australia, you know, like marine biology stuff like that. Uh, like I wanted to be out there, and so traveling was like I always enjoyed traveling. So, and I start seeing people they able to use a camera and to pursue that lifestyle. So that became real for me. Like seeing people online, like, hey, you know what? This person seems very average. They're probably not very average, but like uh, they, they look, it looks weird. They, like they start off as an average guy. They had something they want to pursue and with a camera, with the internet, like that lifestyle became attainable. Um, and you can self, you can self, you, you can learn, you can learn how to shoot yourself through YouTube, like you said, right? But, um, so like I just became wanting to pursue that lifestyle. So I picked up film. I learned it. Thank God I fell in love with it too. Like the art of it. I love I love taking photos, um, and I love the art of it. But the 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 reason at the beginning was just to pursue a lifestyle, to travel, see more places, and use a camera as a tool to get there. And I think now today's like today's day and age is like nothing better than like this opportunity. And brands will be glad to work with you if you you know you produce dope content it lines up with what they do um you can pursue that lifestyle so that's what i want to do and i like uh like i'm really happy to to be able to travel as much as i do now i don't travel a lot but i i would never travel this much i probably go on maybe like five 
pretty decent sized trips. You know, I, I leave for a while, go somewhere cool I've never seen before um, per year. That would never happen to me. Maybe I travel like once a year, use up on my two weeks vacation, stuff like that. So, um, and I'll say to answer the second part of your question, like if there's any like tips I could give to somebody like how, how they could, I haven't really thought about that, but um, I guess there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? I feel like there's a lot of things yeah. I can say about, in, yeah, in, that, in that department. I guess I'm curious, like, what's the, what's the, what's the, if a freelancer, because I ran into this problem too in the fall, and I was, and I came to a decision point where I was, you know, this is what we were talking about before we started rolling. Like my problem was the the content creator persona that I have to have a creative pipeline for, as well as how I'm making my money, are very two separate things. And I have a way that that I relate them. I kind of use my content creator persona to to um, as like a proof of concept for what I can do for who I work with. Mm. Um, so that's why I continue to to feed the machine as, of many reasons, you know. Um, but I, between um, you know, like every weekend in from September to end of October, I was in a different place. I was in Ottawa. I was in Muskoka. I was in Montreal. I flew to Banff. Like I went to Vancouver, yeah. like on and on. And Monday to Wednesday was editing a YouTube video. YouTube videos up on Thursday. I would do that wow. when I was done all the client work and, and social life's destroyed, like on and on and on. And I basically was just like, I'm a freelancer. Like what, how does this make sense to like get it to that next level? And I guess my curiosity with like uh, your decision point to go freelancer to scaling, like what's the tip? If there's maybe something, uh, a nugget where that could help someone realize that they need to scale, is it burnout? Like, like you kind of right. alluded to or, um, yeah. and what's a way to kind of start about going through that process? I, I, I think, um, yeah, th thanks for clarifying that. That makes it a lot easier for me to like put my Thoughts again. Gotta bucket it, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, there's so much the stuff oceans I wanna say. Here, yeah. like, I can't pick I can't pick one. They're all so good. Um, I think one of the things is that for, for me at least, and I feel like a lot of other freelancers have run through this, is that um, you experience burnout and um, and to really think about creating a system and simplifying your workflow. Um, but also think about like outsourcing. Mm. Like, but obviously that's kind of like a good problem to have, right? Um, so for some for like, like having too much business is a good problem to have. Uh, but that was what, um, I, there, was, there was a period where there was uh, too much work, I think. Uh, there's some times where there's not enough work also. And um, that's when you got to hustle a little harder. A feast or famine, eh? yeah. yeah, feast or famine. But there's, there's definitely times where it, you will burn out and you want to you, you wanna start thinking about like, you, like you, you don't want to slave yourself to, you don't, you don't, you don't want to be trapped by your own time limit. Everyone has 24 hours. You cannot have more than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So like, you don't want to be trapped by like, if like, for example, let's say um, like the owner of a, like McDonald's or, or a restaurant, they have 10 employees each working eight hours a day. That's 80 hours pumped into their business. But if you're only if you're the only one making burgers, you can at best twenty four. But I mean, you still gotta sleep, right? Maybe like you can only flip burgers for twelve hours. But it's how to leverage other resources that you have, and to do that, you might have to create a little system so it's it's more duplicatable for somebody else to come in. Like let's say if you're trying to edit a set of photos, like a wedding, right? You shoot, I don't know, you gotta deliver. I don't know how many people did how many photos people did maybe four hundred. Yeah, exactly. Or more. Yeah. Um, like if you only have twenty four hours in a day, if you have like fifty shoots lined up for the season, you're gonna have to have. Uh, if you don't want to burn out, maybe you gotta develop a preset. Mm -hmm. Maybe you gotta hire an editor. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a workflow, or maybe you gotta have somebody that can help you schedule, coordinate these shoots. Like somewhere that you can alleviate your time if you if that if you're getting burned out. But if you're getting burned, that's a great problem to have, and and it's time to. Yeah, I would say one of the tips is to look how you can. How you can like make your workflow more efficient, and also whether if you can. Uh, leverage other people's resources, like other people's time and stuff like that, to your advantage. Fair. 
Yeah, that's what I'll say. But I definitely got a lot more to add to that. But I think that's one of the big things in terms of if you're, if you're burning out. But I guess if you're just starting, if you haven't got to that point yet, it's really important to like hustle and win business. And it's, and it's, it's okay like at the very beginning to not, um, to not like kind of get on a high horse, to, to kind of be more humble, be like, hey, you know what? I don't have a portfolio yet. Like I know I can shoot, I know I'm good, be confident on the work, but um, it's okay to do, like everybody's done deals that are, pretty crappy in the beginning, mm-hmm. but you get your foot in the door and you just know that you're not going to do this forever. And you don't, you're, you like, it's a one-time thing and it's okay to like do crappier deals in the beginning. Uh, if you're just trying to build a portfolio or whatever, that's what I feel. I feel like you have to earn your right. It's like internship, you know, you have to like, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to win a big job, you have to be willing to sacrifice in the beginning and not think you're like, Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna do a deal that's at the beginning. Like, you know, if it's not five grand deal, I'm not gonna do it. But sometimes, like, I've done free jobs in the beginning. I don't, I don't like, you know, recommend everyone to go do free jobs. But I needed to get my foot. In. I need a piece of portfolio, and I know it's, I'm not gonna keep doing that. So it's okay to like suck it up. I think in the beginning, you just gotta hustle and just suck it up and build a portfolio to show your clients that hey, you know what? I'm worth this much yeah yeah i i think that's that's so important um you can check that one quickly just to make sure it's still rolling <laughs> i just want to make sure we're good on the camera um the uh Sorry, man, we're all over no here. that's good no that's good yeah we're good okay cool i just sometimes i got nervous this goes just down cut and, me off if I'm yeah going too no far. no no that was that was <laughs> sick too long. no that was perfect i think honestly for me that's super helpful because the uh the craziest thing for me is like when you see someone it's it's like that fine balance, right? Especially like I've listened to like through the through the beginning of COVID, uh, like at home two weeks. I found um, do you know, you know the Instagram account Art of Visuals? Yes. They that yeah. guy had a podcast. His, his name's uh, Vance. I think his name's Vance. I forget his name now. Um, but they run a production company in like Boise, Idaho. And okay. yeah, the guys, the people behind that account, and uh, they were interviewing creators. Everybody was at home. Like Alex Stead, uh, mm-hmm. like like the, the 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 names, you know what I mean? Like the biggest photographers on Instagram, and uh, they all kind of talked about that like beginning, just all out effort that you need. And I think it's because the the roadmap like in this kind of space is so different for everybody, and the only way you're gonna figure it out is by literally trying everything until something kind of sticks, like in line with what makes sense for your circumstances, right? Like from like you think you're gonna be a photographer, but that means so many different things in actuality when you like look under how photographers actually like, are you gonna be a DP? Are you gonna be in commercial? Like, mm-hmm. are you gonna do weddings? Are you gonna be a headshot like person? Like there's so many different avenues and like some of them are a lot more clearly mapped out. Like I know for a fact, like if I wanted to be a wedding photographer in two months, I could shut everything down, right? go do my cousin's wedding for free, get my portfolio from that, go to some wedding studio in Toronto, join it as a contract agency, and now all of a sudden get farmed out wedding work as a B photographer, yeah. and now I'm on my way, right? Yeah. If I wanna be a travel adventure photographer, <laughs> the amount of investment that that requires, yeah. right, <laughs> on your own part yeah. to make that happen, because I think the, the obscenities and I say obscenities because it is it is truly absurd when you think about the the uh, not only the lifestyle but like the 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 luxury of the job if that makes sense like I know it's it's a lot of work and like but just like the the benefits I think that come along with it to aspire to do that kind of thing you have to expect that it's a lot harder to get that momentum to go into that profession than being able to like there's thousands of weddings. Do you know what I mean? And to get good at the wedding thing is like, you know, if you want to be a very unique studio, you're going to involve, it's going to involve that same amount of work. But I think there's so many, there's so much, I guess what I'm trying to get at is like, travel photographer is like the 1% of the photography sort of space. 
similar to like there's a 1% group of wedding photographers that exist, but the difference is, is there's not a stepladder function to get to that 1% travel photographer. Like you yeah. have to be it versus wedding. You can do a really bad wedding for a very low cost. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you might get 400 bucks because someone needed a favor, right? <laughs> and then steadily get your skill set along the way versus the way you build your skill set to become travel is you're going to spend five grand. You know, you're going to go to the Dolomites on your own and yeah. you're going to sleep in a van and you're going to practice. And yeah. that's how you put your reps in, right? Like, um, it's really interesting that you, you kind of put it that way too. Of like, that's your initial burst. Like you have to be so committed, so driven and willing to hustle in the beginning to make that sort of like vision happen for yourself. And it just looks different in different spaces. Yes. I think that's where I'm going with it. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think like, that's the, uh, the, the funny, the, the way that the dots kind of connect. And this is something that I've been thinking about a lot recently. Yeah. Um, and why I'm also very interested in how you figured it out for yourself is like the way I made the common thread for, for what I do now, especially with this new sort of like social strategy, I, I'm going to call it a bit of like a reveal. Cause like, if you, like I, I was talking to a few friends last night and, and it was like, they were just like, we just thought you were, were doing photography. Like we didn't know you were like consulting on, on brand work for social strategy, right? Like, uh, and I go, yeah, like that became a part of it for X, Y, Z, right? But the common thread has been the, the Instagram presence, has been social media, mm -hmm. is it's been this scalable thing over time. And, and again, leveraging that for other things that are in different sort of topic areas. And I guess my curiosity with you is like, when, you, when I find you online and I'm looking for a photographer and I go, I'm gonna look at this guy's Instagram, it's amazing content. Like I'm sold. I'm like, I want to work with you. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're not necessarily focused on building community. You're not, uh, really, uh, using the platform as I think the platform intends intends on it. Right. Um, like what's been your, uh, I think, uh, journey with social media. Like, do you see it as a tool for you? Do you see it as that sort of like connecting thread or is it still something very extraneous to your business now i i think actually i don't think i know like instagram or whatever TikTok, and, and it, like these hot apps right now um it's like it's it's almost like a must tool for uh creators or anyone's in the creatives uh, especially photographers as well uh, I don't think I'm the best example in terms of utilizing uh, Instagram, um, but I've seen so many success stories with people very close to me who has seen a lot of success. They they have you know received brand work and stuff like that through uh, their use of social media. Like, you know they're posting good content, um, brand friendly content, and stuff like that. They, it's become a portfolio for them. Like the, they they strategize. They strategize in a way where uh, whatever they post is what they want the brand to see sometimes. You know, obviously they also post stuff. That it's, it's also what their audience wants to see as well. But it, it, it's really about, it's almost like, it's really a showing off to the brand that, hey, you know, I'm very capable of delivering your, uh, like uh, creating assets that line up with your brand identity. Mm. Like it's, it's that, that thought definitely goes into their, um, um, the creative mind definitely goes into my content as well. Even though I, a lot of the content I post are, um, like landscapes and stuff, but it shows like what my capabilities are. Um, I think one of the coolest, I haven't had a ton of success to be honest with, uh, in terms of like a uh, winning on social media, like uh, social media supporting my actual business. A lot of the work I do is me, uh, reaching out and finding the brands that fit the projects I want to do. Um, is that like a DM? Is that email LinkedIn? Like I, you know what, whatever ways I could get my message in front of the decision makers eyes. Cool. So email is a big one. Sometimes I DM if we can't find the email. Um, yeah, but emails, emails, the main one for me, um, just whatever way, you know, if I, if I don't know who the decision makers, is, I'll ask of like, Hey, you know what? Like I'll have this exciting project coming up, you know, Bali, you know, a really qu quick one sentence spiel about like, uh, what's going to happen there. Be like, Hey, I'm trying to, uh, connect with the 
best contact for uh, something like this, uh, would you be would you be able to point me in the right direction? And you know, ninety percent of the time they don't. Ninety five percent of the time they they don't they don't respond. Uh, but that one time that they point me to, there's my opportunity. So just do it in, in volume for me. Uh, but sorry, looping back to um, the question, it hasn't had like a ton of success because I don't think I really, uh, you know, you reap what you sow, right? Mm. And I definitely didn't. Uh, I don't think I don't think I put as much effort into social media as I as I could be. But I have seen some some, some success with it too. I think oh shit, one of like a funnest campaign I've done was uh, last year during fall when I was working with Ford Canada. Cool. And they found me through a random, like a really random post I made. It was, uh, we were in Iceland. We're doing a completely different campaign project. I was with uh, Roy and uh, some, uh, some of the guys, Daniel, uh, Matt, and those guys as well. We were all out there in Iceland and we had a rental car, it was a Hyundai. We ran to a glacial river. It's a very tiny like river, like a stream. And there's a nice mountain with this giant gray shirt at the back. And we're like, we're running our car through this thing. We're taking photos, we're taking video. We have to run our car through this. There's no way we're not running our car through this thing for some epic photo. So we ran it through. Everyone got like uh, very cool videos, very cool photos from that. And I made a post on it. And I just tagged, I, I forgot what I, uh, what I hashtagged, but they found me through a hashtag, I think. They didn't tell me exactly, but there's no other way they could have found me because it was, I just posted kind of, my Instagram, I kind of share with mainly to my friends, really, and my other photography friends, like the, the in the community. Um, so they somehow found it, and then they reached out. You know, we we did discovery call, and uh, they just trusted my vision. They're like, "Hey, we got Bronco that's coming out. You want to take it somewhere and just rip it and just get some content? We have this campaign lined up. You know, we talk about the details and stuff like that, and just." Super fun. We went rock climbing. Oh, really? Yeah, that was the, that oh, was the, in, that was the whole oh, spiel with it. Okay. Um, they, they were like, oh, yeah, you'll take it to camping somewhere up north in oh, Kalani. I'm like, hey, how about we go a little later in fall where the colors are insanely beautiful? Yeah. And why why, why just camp? Why don't we camp and rock climb? Because that fits the whole Jeep identity. I'm like, and I love rock climbing. Nice. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. That was super fun. <laughs> Yeah, except the part where we got rained on 20 percent. <laughs> was that so that was up in Killarney in the fall? That was when Killarney it... went up to Sudbury and we found okay. this random rock face the local told us. Oh, that, oh so wait, okay, hold on. Because this is like a crazy adventure. That's wild. So <laughs> did you have a location in mind already? Got there, talked to a local, then got derailed? Like is that we knew we want to go rock climbing. Okay. Um so so, so they they Ford wanted um uh, something to do with fall and something to do with outdoor adventure. But their idea was <laughs> very exact, very like <laughs> I think I think like too too easy. Too yeah, simple, yeah, right? yeah. You're like, like I can make it's this. It's not happen. spicy enough. Yeah, yeah. It's just like camping. I'm like, come on. <laughs> That's I'm so like, funny. What, like I'm not gonna drive three hours just to go camping. Right? Yeah. Let's let's do <laughs> let's it. Let's do it. Up, yeah. Right? Let's do it. Let's camp and let's go climbing. Cause like that fits the, that's like, that's so rugged, right? You're that's pulling, forward, yeah. You're pulling a rope, you're pulling climbing shoes, you're pulling helmets, harnesses out of the trunk. Like that's so rugged. I'm like, that looks, that that's, that's an amazing. They, they love it. And we're also capable of doing that too, which is, which is dope. So um, yeah, we went up North, went up to Killarney. We camped there. We took, we took the car with some beautiful fall scenery and stuff like that on the roads, some drone shots, aerial shots, stuff like that uh, with the bright orange color. Uh, a little, Orange teal action going on. Mm, over there. there you go. Yeah, I know, right? Take those <laughs> the yellow green leaves and just knock the slider over. It's so funny. And then, um, and then we went up to Sudbury, and we knew there's there's like really cool rocks up there to climb. Yeah. Like cliff face and stuff like that. But we actually don't really know where it is because it's hard to find information on it. So went to a climbing gym, just chill one day, just climb there, and we talked to the locals like, hey, we saw pictures of this place that you peel rock and do people climb it? He's like, yeah. I was there last week. And she's like, how do you get there? He's like, oh, it's complicated. You have to stop at the middle of the highway, hike through a swamp, blah, 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 blah. Of course. Like, no, we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up pulling it through it. it was, That's it so was epic. Sick, yeah. When'd you get into climbing? I wanted to ask you this. Cause like, I feel like, here's my thing. Here's my theory, okay? If you did start an Instagram, yeah. I, I have this thing that like you would, your niche would, would be like, one third climbing high end photography that nobody else is able to do. That's actually 
one of my goals for this year. Okay. Like, yeah. I think you, like, it doesn't exist. Like, I, and I'm just like, when I see your stuff, I'm like, you would absolutely, like. Yeah. Um, I, I, that's, that's one of my goals for this year. For, well, first of all, I don't think, um, there's a lot of crazy talented uh, photographers well, that shoot climbing. Yeah, absolutely. Climbing. Absolutely. And I don't think I'm anywhere close to their level. They're like, they're definitely better than me creatively and physically. Like, they're better at climber than I am. But, um, but this year for me, I kind of want to learn, build up the skill in climbing. Okay. Uh, I think I improved a lot over the, over the last year, but in terms of like more, more safety stuff, I want to cool. get more familiarized with safety stuff. Like, uh, like the thing with climbing is shooting. Climbing is very different from any other shooting because you have to be strapped on a rope. You have to carry, you have to know how to climb up to the spot to find the right angle. So To find the best angle, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you have to be safe and you have to carry your camera with you. You don't want to bang up your camera on the, on the if you're up there, you don't want to be changing lens. I, I don't actually, so I haven't figured that part out. I don't feel like you don't <laughs> want to be changing lens because you don't want to drop the lens and hit somebody down there. Right? Yeah, that's what you're worried <laughs> well, about is. <laughs> or you don't want to drop your SD card when you're pulling it. <laughs> then you're screwed. But, um, but um, yeah, I think, um, I really want to get into the climbs because that's the sport is growing super fast. And I think the content just looks epic. It's insane. Well, cause I, I, I obviously only know Jimmy Chin. Yeah. Like, and everybody Jimmy knows. Chin. Yeah. He's, like he's got to unbelievable, today. unbelievable yeah. work. But the, uh, I think like the, the speed of which climbing has exploded. Like I, I know so many people that are like, Oh yeah, I go climbing like once a week. I go climbing. I go to, boulders literally yeah, everyone's like at a bouldering gym now yeah you know, it's like, like it's that. wild so yeah. it, was this was this a pandemic thing for you too or was this like no i just moved to uh moved to scarborough um my brother and i we bought a house there and um and my cousin just um uh he lives very close by and he's he's an amazing climber he's cool. he's very good and he took me and i just got hooked and plus like i'm kind of into the outdoors and stuff like that you know hiking and stuff it kind of like, yeah it's a part of it yeah, yeah. and i would love to what I would love, I love shooting climbing too. Like recently, as a hobby right now, when I go with my buddies, uh, I just think being able, like I take landscapes of mountains and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. But there's not a photo field climbing up the mountain. This is a photo. This is why you have your niche here. Like I'm telling you. Like, yeah, like you go to you go to Banff. You <laughs> yeah. Know, you, you see Lake Louise, you know, um, or like um, like Mount Rundle, whatever mm -hmm. the classic shot. Yeah, but what if you're climbing up Mount Rundle? Obviously, you can't. I don't think. I don't know if you could climb it with a rope, but like, yeah, I haven't seen but that, like, but... you know what I mean, like yeah, Patagonia, yeah. the cliff face, like shooting somebody there instead of like the classic touristy shot down there. It's just like that whole adventure aspect. I just feel like if, yeah, you know, like back it. to the innocent yeah. days, like I, uh, that's that's the lifestyle I want to pursue, and photography is literally enabling that lifestyle. So, how important then is it to like have that sort of creative outlet outside of? A creative profession because I feel like you know what <laughs> I'm, I'm getting so at what I'm so glad you asked yeah that question. like 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 what like I actually feel like after picking up photography as a career I don't pick up the camera as much as I used to mm. uh, I might spend more time on my camera actually uh, but I don't feel like I'm spending more time being creative as I was when it was a hobby because mm. um, the camera is like it, 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 I associate it with work now. Oh, interesting. And sometimes when I'm like, uh, whenever I pick up camera, I want to help, something in my head just like shifts. Mm. And I'm like, I want to make the most out of every button I click. And like for a little bit of, for, for a few months, I kind of got jaded, which I thought I never would. I think it's because of the, like the burnout and stuff like that, the amount of work in it. And I just don't want to, Pick it up. And I was actually listening to a podcast. Do you know who Chris Burkhardt is? By yeah, of course. Okay. Wait, perfect. Chris Burkhardt on Rich Roll? Is that, is that podcast? Or which, I don't who, remember. who is he interviewed I don't, by? I listened to oh, a few okay. of his podcasts. He was a guest on. He's a phenomenal interviewer. Like, oh, yeah. He's, or interviewee, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he's, uh, he definitely gives a lot of nuggets. But uh, he talked about one thing, and I listened to this maybe like a year and a half before I even considered quitting my job. Uh, to pursue it. And, and he said one thing, somebody asked him, do you pick up a camera outside of when you're doing like projects? He's like, never, it never leaves my house. And I was like, and I'm like, wow. why not? He's like going to these amazing places. It's cause he's 
just like once it's become, it's just a little bit, I don't think that's like that for everybody. Yeah. Uh, but I, also think I definitely understand what, what he means now. Like it becomes a job yeah. for a while. Yeah. Especially when I'm in Ontario, I used to go to local waterfalls to shoot and have a great time, but I don't feel as inspired by it anymore. Maybe I like go to Bali, then I like to shoot. Then I'm like oh, inspiring all the creativity juices come back and I want to shoot fun. But definitely, uh, yeah, once I picked up it as a job, it's, it means something different to me now. Yeah. So, so I have a creative and, outlet. Yeah. Sorry, I'm like going No, to that's good, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm loving it. It's unreal. <laughs> we're all like, but I think, yes, having a creative outlet is important. Like having an outlet yeah, yeah. of any sort is, I think it's good. Like even when you're working in a job, like hiking was my outlet. Photography was my outlet. But now photography is my job. Still love it. Love it way more than whatever I was doing before. Uh, rock climbing is kind of my outlet now. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. Yeah, with Chris, uh, so it's funny you brought him up too because the if there's any podcast that's like, for me, had the most impact, it was uh, Chris Burkhardt in the Rich Roll interview. That's why I asked about that. What, what, how do you say it? Um, Rich Roll? Yeah, R-I-C-H. I'm going to listen to that. Oh, get back. literally, so the Rich, yeah, on your way back, honestly, the Rich Roll podcast is my favorite podcast like in the world. Like it, it, He's this vegan ultra marathon runner, retired wow. now, yeah, and he's maybe... For, he's in his 50s, I think. I think he was running ultra marathons though in his 40s. And uh, he's a recovering alcoholic, like a whole crazy story, super inspirational. And he just, this Chris Burkhardt interview for me, like just hits on so many things that like I struggle with as okay. well. And like, yeah, he, it just gave me such an appreciation for him and his work and like the surfing photography he gets. Like oh. I, I just like sit and look crazy. at his, oh, it's nuts, yeah. especially in, um, What's that place in Norway? Yes, where he was in the Arctic Circle, right? Crazy. Oh, he talked about that in that podcast too? Uh, he talk, yeah, yeah, he mentioned? did, yeah, yeah. Because that was that the giant talk. in the back, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 oh yeah. And he was like, the fingers are like freezing off and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, honestly, like, I, I can't get over that. Like, because yeah. I feel like we all kind of crave to be in those situations to some degree. Like, to, like, some of the, like, I think about spec work. Right, and I go like, spec work's fun because you come up with the concept, you like can put yourself in like a harrowing situation, like, and you can give yourself something that you're probably not gonna get hired for, like if you really just wanna get like super out there, like I wanna go work with Polaris. So I'm gonna go rent a snowmobile, go to wherever, right, shoot a snowmobile campaign, like Aaron Brimhall is a perfect example, like, yes. the, right, in his snowmobiling photos and snowboarding photos, I'm pretty sure like, a 90% of those are taken when they just go snowboarding. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. but they look unbelievable and he's there with his camera, the snowboard on his back. Like, yeah. and it's like those like creative moments where you look at a guy like Chris Burkhardt, who's able to shoot like surfers in these unbelievable locations, which could have been a spec shoot for somebody else that them and their buddy decided they're going to go to Norway to go shoot. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it's just like a different level of, of the profession itself. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's the coolest thing about him. Um, definitely living a yeah. crazy life. <laughs> but yeah, right? I'm so adventurous, yeah. The cool thing about him, too, is like he managed to fuse the surfing. Because I'm trying to remember his story exactly. I think he was surfing when he was just starting. His, his story, his backstory. He is, shot back in the days where they published what magazine was. Yeah, the surf magazines before, and stuff. Like, the whole social, internet stuff. I, I just can't remember if he like had a personal investment in surfing or not, or if it was he just loved shooting it. You know what I mean? Like, um, but I think where what I wanted like where I'm where I'm thinking like this kind of maybe aligns with you, and I, I know for me too, I have parallels with like his story is like the uh, the climbing photography fusion. Yeah. Um, are we allowed to talk about the Arcteryx work or photos or like what oh, you yeah, kind of totally. do with that? Yeah, like yeah, what's, totally. so like how are you bridging like, I know uh, they have their own like internal production team and like all that, like, but like what's, like I just love what you do with their clothing. <laughs> like if I'm being honest, like and their, their outerwear, like oh. and when you have your climbing gear on, it's Arc'teryx work too, yeah. isn't it? Like, so how are you fusing that sort of climbing love with like the client side or even just like the nature of spec work? Like, yeah. Um, sorry, did I interrupt? This, you no, no, that's question, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. no, yeah. The, the question is basically just like, are, is your Arcteryx side spec? Are you actively doing spec work? Is it just you happen to own Arcteryx and that's what shows up in your climbing photos? 
So actually, no, I never owned any Arterix before working with Arterix. Um, their their gears their gear are not they're not cheap right yeah like they're like quality gear yeah. but they come at a pre they're a premium quality but come at a premium price yeah. right um well, i've heard they're the supplier for the canadian military or something like that like oh, i don't know really? yeah they, they they're I'm all their sure gore-tex yet. is like what the canadian military uses as theirs and that's so, yeah so yeah probably they have gore-tex probably in, like i'm not i'm not entirely sure but but gore-tex is like a separate company from arcteric so they like supply they, they mm. supply the fabric like that technology too like different brands like North Face, um, that things like that. Didn't know this. Even Echo, apparently, they have a Gore Tex shoes, the one that we were using. Oh, no way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I have no idea. I know that. you rock a sick Gore Tex jacket, though. I right? do, yeah. <laughs> it's a beta it's AR, I think. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> I got the, the, the beta LT, the hoodie, or uh, the, the pouch, and then I got the, the AR over top, and then I, man, I got the, uh, I can't remember the snow pant, because I, I, I started snowboarding this year, so I mm. bought their their shell snow pants with the bib. Oh, wow, okay. Amazing. Yeah. Like, I was shocked, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> no, I love that. Right yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I never own any uh, products with them. So actually, I don't work with Arterix, like the corporate, like Arterix period. I work with specifically the Toronto locations, like the re retail side of things. Um, at their Arcterics Toronto. So what they do is that they just, they try to build a community of like, you know, adventures or whatever they're trying to promote, adventures, rock climbing, blah, 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 around the GTA, cool. the greater Toronto area. And I reached out to them a um, long time ago. They're probably one of the first brands I work with, but they're, they're not so much of like a commercial client. I'm more like an ambassador with them. Uh, so because I do all these projects, go on photo shoots, I, hike and stuff like that um when i have a cool project that's coming up they're happy to sponsor me gear um to support um the project that's going on so cool. let's say i'm going on like a backcountry hike for three three days or something in banff or whatever uh, if i need a certain type of gear or they trying to push a certain type of gear they see if there's a fit and then they supply me with that mm. so that like i'm well fitted like like i'm good and obviously like what what whatever activities I'm doing that I'm going to be getting some footage back with their gear and and uh they, they could use it if they want um but so I started working with them as like hiking interesting because I just uh I only rock started rock climbing last year and obviously I'm not gonna promote this other I suck in the first six months I don't know how to pull on anything <laughs> <laughs> I'm falling off the rock half the time hilarious um, so um so I started hiking with them, but I had that relationship with them already. So when I transferred to rock climbing, it makes perfect sense. And they, they're a big climbing brand. And now we just, we just, we just, we just like, whenever we have a climbing project that's going on, we haven't came with a big one just because like I said earlier, like we're not familiarized with the technicality of like the safety, the ropes, we're not that familiar with it. So we don't want to get over our heads because you could die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, um, so we did a really minor, like a small uh, climbing trip up north. I did it with Daniel Battersby um, because he climbs as well and he loves I didn't stuff. know that. Yeah, I oh, did it okay. with Daniel Battersby. And he, I met Daniel through, he's also an Arcteryx Toronto ambassador. I, I met him through there. He's actually the first photographer I met on Instagram ever. Cool. So, um, so I went up, I shot with him because we both work for the same company anyway. So, um, yeah, we, we shot up there, we shot some climbing content um, for fun. It was the first time we rigged somebody up right next to somebody who's climbing. Uh, I think the shots could have been better. It's just because we, we the, the only route we could climb that day, because we, we suck right now. The only route we could climb that day is not the best looking route. <laughs> <laughs> to climb the really That's epic hilarious. route, you have to be way better. <laughs> like twice as good as what we, when we shot that. So, so we have to get be That's so be better funny. as a climber first. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, it's, it's bridging really well. Super exciting. Cool, cool. Yeah, I I uh, I I think I actually remember the stories um, of you guys up there. I didn't know that this is what you were up to though. I just thought you were climbing for fun. Like <laughs> it was it was for fun. Oh yeah. yeah. Was like, Still combined work. Like, yeah. Combined work because like our terrace has been very chill with us. Okay, cool. They just kind of let us do our thing. They trust us. They trust that you know. That's good when you, you get the nice relationship procedure. there. Yeah, they have a lot of trust. Cool. Um, yeah, so yeah. do you do you work then with Daniel often or is do you have like um 
Well, I noticed you do work with Daniel often, I guess, obviously. But like your, like your Iceland trip, the, the thing that you guys did last year, which was funny because I left the same day that you guys arrived in Iceland. I don't know if you remember this. Like, oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah and yeah. I was like, I was fully debating. I commented on your, one of your stories. I was like, what? You're here? <laughs> yeah, literally. Because <laughs> I, I went there for, for a separate project that I was working on. And then and I was just like fully debating, like, do I just like extend it like calm like but it's all good because you guys had your thing you had your system um and uh and i was just like i just met them <laughs> so what am i gonna do like no <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> um hilariously though the, like the uh the 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 dynamic of that group like what i saw from the outside looking in is like the quality of the creative that i think you can get by having a group of people that are all kind of of the same um, mindset or like motivation to get the content on the trip helps everything just come together in such a unique way versus like someone who's like going on vacation and thinking they're gonna get like cool photos of like a boot, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you went in with, with a shot list, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Like you yes. had a plan, you had deliverables, you had uh, partnerships already in place, like, um, so I guess how important was it or how important is it for you to like um, set up a team and like collaborate with other creators versus kind of be like your oh, lone yeah. wolf? Yeah. I think it's, I almost think it's a must now. I think it's it's so beneficial to, to collaborate than just to push it by yourself. I think it's, I think it's a major game changer for me. And I think it has been for a lot of other creators. And I know for a fact that it has uh, its huge benefit for some of the buddies I work with. Uh, I know one of one of the friends I work pretty close with, um, Matthew Chung. Yeah. You probably know him as well. He's, he's killing really, it. He's killing it. Yeah. And he he preaches that way more than anybody else, I think. Um, I, I just so in terms of the collaboration, just because as a as a creator, it's just like when you if you wanna pursue if you wanna advance your career you will want to connect with other people in your field let's say i don't know let's just use digital marketing as an example you want to you want to be better at it you want to connect with your peers right you want to link up with somebody from linkedin mm -hmm. if like they're launching campaign or like you know COVID is here like how do you continue to survive your business in the marketing aspect uh, during COVID? if you're like a marketing director you will want to connect with you, another marketing guy from other companies, and then instead of competing, uh, holding holding back your 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 um, y like your um, your successes, your ideas and stuff, you discuss it with them because you both are trying to make it together. You discuss it like, hey, you share best practices with each other. I think that's the word. I think I think sharing best practices uh, with each other, and that's how you do your job better, right? And it's the exact same thing with the uh, with like a photographer, creative, whatever. Uh, Instagram is just a creative LinkedIn, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Right? So like connecting with the people for me changed everything. Not only did I learn their workflow, like from down to stuff like how they organize their files on their computer when they finish editing, how they name their files and stuff like that. And be, coming from someone who's very unorganized, that was huge for me. And just, and also on the creative side, like when, when let's say you get to a place and you're all shooting content together, they develop their eye very differently from how you develop their eye. So they see things differently and the stuff you can learn from them is totally different. Like, wow. You remember when we went to um, the Q Falls that first time there was, um, there was another gentleman there, Alan, Alftown. Oh, Alftown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, yeah. Unbelievable nature photographer. Like, Unbelievable. <laughs> crazy. So, like just like being there when I was just walking by this like nothing. I looked at it as like, it's just a, this waterfall it didn't look like anything to me and he was like he was talking to somebody i think he was talking to i forgot who he was talking to he was like oh yeah there's a nice triangle here composition and if the person walks right in the frame it frames them perfectly out i looked and I'm like holy cow yeah, yeah. what did he just saw how, <laughs> how did he see that yeah but his eye is just like just now i'm starting to think trying to i'm like oh why i start asking the question like what made you see that shot and he was like, oh yeah, so I saw these lines, stuff like that, composition, leading lines here, blah, 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 blah. And I start, I start next time I go on the shoot, I start, that starts to 
that, that got in my head and I start thinking like that. And then my composition start improving or it, mm. or it change or it evolves. And I think the creative aspect is just huge. And also the, and also you could just do more to get more content. You feel more inspired by other people. I think you have to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you, you're shooting self in the foot if you're not. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How long, how often do the relationships materialize in the friendships? Or do you? Oh, I feel yeah. almost instantly. Instantly, eh? Because, uh, um, like, uh, these guys, I, I, you know, we, we, we obviously knew each other on Instagram a little bit before. Like, we, we, we're not like complete, complete. We never talked to each other before. Like, it definitely, we respect each other's work. Uh, we like what each other, what each other do, and we want to learn from each other. That's I think that's that comes first mm. uh, before meeting up. Um, I think likewise for us. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> literally, we're here, right? It's like <laughs> <laughs> likewise it's true. for us. So yeah, it comes with um, you know it, the moment you meet each other, it's almost like wow, like I feel like I know you for so long because we speak the same languages, we we nerd out on the same yeah. things. Yeah, uh, we nerd out on like which lenses, which aperture. Yeah. Uh, things like that. So yeah, it was it funny. Uh, yeah, it's 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 like uh, we had the Socality event maybe like a month ago now. Oh yeah, and I felt like everybody in Socality was my buddy. Well, that's yeah, yeah like <laughs> it's true though. Like the uh, like like I, that was the first time I saw Daniel there in since Deku Deku Falls. Deku, I want to call it Deku. Oh, you went to the one <laughs> very recently. Yeah, right? not the no, ship. I, Are you talking about the ship? I didn't went to the ship. Oh. I, I went to, we were both at the one at the Christmas party at the Stiller District. Oh, yeah. Year. like That was the only yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. Yeah, that, that, that was a funny one. But I didn't meet you there. I knew you were there, though. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, there, well, there was, who was there? There was a, uh, who was that filmmaker that was there? There was, uh, Elliot Choi was there. Like, there were some bigger names there, too, at that Christmas market one. Elliot. Uh, is it Choi's last Is it the name? Life with Elliot? Right? Life with Elliot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know his last name, but yeah, Life with Elliot. I hope I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> but yeah, Life with Elliot. <laughs> um, also, like, unbelievable travel photographer. But yeah, but it's like we walked into that studio space uh, a month ago at o, uh, OBJX, OBJX, mm. and uh, it's like you just hit it off with everybody. And yeah. it, but I feel like the 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 content creator sort of life is is actually quite isolated. Very lonely. Yeah. Very lonely. Unless you like force yourself to go to these environments and then after that it's like everything's okay <laughs> you yes. know what i mean but until like you realize like like there's somebody right now his name's ryan uh i'm gonna put his at on the screen we gotta we gotta shout this guy out he's just starting out um i think it's ryan josie i want to say he he was at the event he had um He's, he's starting a YouTube channel and every week now he's doing like creator meetups like for coffee and like all these things and he's, mm. he's bringing the Toronto community together and he's just doing it to, to connect okay. like it's so genuine um, like he went he was just in Vancouver for the last locality meetup like literally like a couple days ago like um, and, and I just find like it's like you don't know that you need the people until you finally make that bridge you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and that's what the, with the SoCali things. If there's anything that like we need more of in the space, I think like the SoCali events are like. I think uh, SoCali is great. Yeah, like I feel like Toronto itself is very limited compared to the Montreal, Vancouver sort of like mm. possibilities. Like, mm, okay. Do you find like because you you were saying like one like as you were talking about your hiking like stories and like going out in nature and like most people are like there's nothing in Ontario I'm not even gonna bother. Like, do you, are you restricted in Toronto? 100%. Or, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I love Ontario, but uh, for my field, um, yes. Um, and I'm not the only one that thinks that. Yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, um, yeah, you, you touched on something really, I think really important. It's like, it feels very lonely for me in the beginning. As a, just even as a hobby. It feels weird because I want to, I want to, I, I, there's a lot of like breakthroughs you, 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 you discover when you meet with other people. You're like, whoa, mm. I never think like that. I never see that stuff like that. And at first, um, being a, especially like in the nature photography space in the beginning, it was very really lonely for me here. I felt lonely. And I, there's not that many people that shoot like what I shoot yeah. in, 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 in Ontario really either. So let alone Toronto. Um, so, it was great when I first discovered a few people that shoot here. Um, 
you know, like Roy McDaniel, and it was, and just like, and I was kind of shy at first. I assumed social media just for fun for me, like it's nothing, it's just a hobby at the time, just trying to impress my buddies. Um, and when I got linked up with one person, I realized how lonely everybody else yeah, also yeah. felt, and, the, and how happy we were to be together. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're not the only one. Like we get to complain about the same things together, <laughs> you know, like yeah. this. And then we get to share our struggles with each other and stuff like that. And then also share a lot of tips with each other. Um, I guess that comes back to the collaboration thing too. Like it was so helpful. And, um, but yeah, you're right. It does feel really lonely, but you realize everybody else all feeling the same way. So yeah. just now I like, I'm like a lot more open. I see somebody's work. I like they're in town. I message them. Yeah, like, let's you go. Know, I'm like, Hey, dope work. Uh, ever in town, let me know. If you have a cool project that's coming, you want to shoot some cool waterfall, whatever, let me know. We'll see if we set something up together. And every time, uh, their response is always super positive. Like, whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, I've been waiting for you. Yeah, I've been yeah let's watching, do it, yeah. I saw you work so many times. Like, I'm so glad you asked, blah, blah, blah. blah. Never, like, people are like, oh, okay, you know, the work is trash. Yeah, they like judge you by your, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually really funny. <laughs> The, uh, Everyone's always really supportive. Yeah, they're supportive, right? And, yeah. and it's uh, on the, uh, the the one funny thing too on the loneliness thing is, and this is a great idea. Um, I don't know how applicable it is now. Like I'd sooner go to a coffee shop with somebody, but I remember listening to a podcast with Peter McKinnon, and he was talking about how uh, he struggled with it too, even. And and he used to be like editing his YouTube videos, and he would put um, a phone or a, a Zoom call or a FaceTime or whatever like in the background of him and his magician friend, Chris Ramsey, I think, and they would just work on Zoom, like, on Zoom or whatever, virtually, but because someone was there, that like helped. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you could still be connected instead of just like isolated. Um, and it's like those little quick wins, and then eventually you meet somebody, and eventually you go to an event, and, and, and it just kind of like snowballs, so. Yeah. Um, so what's, so locations wise though, is creatively limited with Toronto, or is it like, Oh yeah, sorry. Like, yeah, yeah. That no, that's okay. Because I'm, because I feel everybody's me. takes. No, no. no. Every, everybody's <laughs> like takes are different. Place. Everybody's takes on Toronto are so different. Like I know for myself, in the winter for street photography, Toronto is a nightmare. It's all gray, dark. Like yeah, that fits the aesthetic to a certain degree. But and you make it work well, though. <laughs> but I, I, it's a struggle, man. Like in, in the winter, I have to shoot three times more than I do in the summer because there's just less people. There's less interesting things. The buildings yeah. are like there's so many things that like to again to maintain the content pipeline that I, that I know I need. Like I have to go Absolutely. more. Yeah, because I know one of those three days I'm gonna get zero. Mm -hmm. Like versus in the summer, every night hits. Like mm -hmm. every time I go. Um, but I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but so what's what's limiting for you? Like, I, what's I the? I I think it's limiting just because um, the the travel the whole travel adventure uh, space the 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 quality of it has been really pushed up. Like the standard has been really high for for my space now. Like people are numb to even some of the most beautiful places, like Lake Louise. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I know it's like Lake Louise, like, <laughs> which is wild. It's, what? it's like, like, exactly, that's a reaction. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I've been there, I've been there. Or I've seen a thousand pictures of it. When I go there, it looks exactly the same. So like that's, that, that standard has been elevated. That's crazy. Like the, the standard is so high yeah. now. So like, um, and, and Toronto just doesn't cut it. Yeah, it's weird, eh? It's weird, yeah. yeah. But, um, but you know what I do love? When you do make it work here. That's like, it. The occasion. And then you're just like, wow, yeah. what is this place? It looks like not Ontario. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, but it's hard. It, it it is. It's a lot easier to be in a beautiful place versus being uh, versus using all your creative muscle to make an okay place look beautiful. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, and I I know like with the Vancouver creatives, there's a few people I'm following right now that are doing such unique things out there, and it's like they just. But it's the same thing, like for me, I know every, like it sounds bizarre. I've walked Toronto so many times, like I know where certain interactions of people happen. I know f the flow of like how people walk through this, like, and, but it's because I've been walking it for the last three years, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I know this one, uh, one creator in, in Vancouver who like is in Whistler every single weekend. And it's like, she might be, an extremely talented photographer, but there's something like innate that comes from going to the same spot over and over and over and over again yes. and figuring it out. Yes. And, and like, 
And the only now, so now you add on Whistler, beautiful stuff, right? You're figuring and it out. And you're figuring it out. Like, how do you compete crazy, with that, yeah. right? And it's like, so I guess um, just because I want to be conscious of your time, then if you had like imparting wisdom for the aspiring creative or the 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 content creator before we uh, we wrap things up, would you have like a message if if someone's just wanting to start out? Like, where's the where's the place to start? Um, I think. Practice makes perfect. I think, um, uh, can I say two things? Yeah, yeah. So one is um, uh, be very self-critical of your work uh, and try to identify the gap. Like everyone, everyone who's starting has somebody who they want to be. And I do as well and you do as well. Like in terms of the work-wise, uh, be very, study hard and identify what that gap is. And then finding a solution to that, like whether that'll be YouTube tutorials, or whatever, that will help you improve your the quality of your work. And the second is to get better is to do it a lot, like do it re on repeat. Um, and just uh, if you have something in mind you want to shoot, you have inspiration, don't don't shy away and don't put it away. Go out and shoot it. Go out and and do it. And um, that will just the action of doing whether you achieve it or not will help you discover new things and give you a new perspective and that will help you improve um can i have one more yeah go for okay. it we have the battery Two percent. all right okay yeah one more just uh, reach out to other people who's also starting out because they're they they, they would love to meet you i know like it's hard to you might be self-critical of your work you might not think you're good enough but trust me like you're good enough you know something that other people don't um and you will be able to, they will be more than happy to link up with you. I love and that. And learn together. So yeah. I love 100%. that. If, uh, if that, that's a way to wrap up podcast number one over <laughs> here, I think that that's the best way to do it. I want to say thanks, awesome. for, Thank thanks for coming, man. We're going to put thanks, your contacts bro. and where to find you out in the show notes. And yeah. uh, if anybody wants to check out your work, what's your uh, website? And we can uh, plug it as well. Okay. Should I, should I say it now? Yeah, yeah just say like. Uh, well, my IG handle is uh, at... G Y Zong, so G Y Z H O N G, and uh, my uh, website. You can find me at Ten Miles Studios with the S dot com. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have, thanks for having me. That's guys. a wrap.